Welcome, this is the RPA Champion and in today's video we are going to be learning how to create a loop, a loop with a counter. This is going to be really interesting and very useful for your processes. Now I have already created a, a for loop uh, previously so I will delete, delete this so that we can start from scratch. Now in a previous video we created a, uh, a loop using the loop functionality from Prism. So we used uh, we used the loop and then we added a collection and we created a loop that went through a table basically. Now this kind of loop is going to be a little bit different. So the first thing that we need, we need two variables. We need two data items. One data item is going to be a counter, a counter that we are going to increment as we go through the different steps of our process. So we will set the initial value to one and we'll create another variable that we will call a loop. This is the number of times that we want our process to each iterate through. So let's say that we want it to go through six times. The initial value is going to be one. So our process is going to go uh, five times before it or four times before it exits the loop So let's add a couple of actions. So let's imagine these are a couple of actions in our process So we are doing a couple of steps now. We want to repeat those steps. Let's say five times So we already created our data items now. We need a decision point in this decision point We need to check if the loop is going to be greater than the counter now if the loop is, uh, or if the counter is greater than the loop, then we are going to exit from our uh, process. Now, until that condition uh, is not satisfied, we are going to be continue looping in our process. So let's add the calculation stage. Let's add our counter uh, data item variable, and let's increment it by one. So every time that our loop is going to go to the decision stage and is going to go to the no path, it's going to hit this calc stage and it's going to increment the counter with one. We also want to, after we increment the counter with one, we want to store the counter inside itself. So uh, initially the counter is going to be one. Once it goes to the calc stage, it's going to become two. And the next cycle is going to be two. Then it's going to be plus one, three, and so on until it reaches the highest number that we set inside of our loop or the number that the decision point is going to uh, make it exit from our process. All right, let's make this pretty. And now let's just recap one more time. So we start our process. We do a couple of actions inside of our process. Then we have a decision point where we check if the counter is greater than the loop. If the counter is greater than the loop, if our condition is satisfied, then we uh, continue, we continue with our process uh, and we exit it. If our condition is not satisfied, then we uh, go to the calc stage and we add one to the counter. Once we add the counter, we repeat the different steps. Now I'm going to uh, remove the two actions because we don't need them. We, just, we are not doing anything. We just want to see the counter if it's working. So let's start our process. It's going to the decision stage. So uh, pay attention to the counter. It's every time it goes to the calc stage, it's going to increment by one. So imagine in here, uh, we would have different actions that will be repeating as many times as we need to, or as many times as we want to, or we have set inside of our loop. So now that it has reached uh, seven, or meaning that the counter is greater than the loop, I could have also made it greater or equal, uh, so that it would ex exit exactly at six, uh, our process finishes. I really hope this was informative. If you have any suggestions on future videos, please please let me know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video. Have a great day.